Hello, Svetlana. Hello, Arne. You are going to show us a couple of more smart moves of yours today. And um, we're having, yeah, we had the special last week. And today we're going to take another look at another of your games. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to, to analyze it. Last week was a lot of fun to, to do that. So um, yeah, open chess base and present us the chessboard, please. Mm -hmm. Do you see the screen? Yes. Okay, Perfect. Is it? Yeah. I will just place us here in the middle. Okay, maybe a bit here. Perfect. Here? Or here? You choose. Uh, I think I think uh, you can put us wherever you want to. I have the command of where to. <laughs> oh, oh, so you don't. Uh, so, okay, you're doing it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. That so... was you. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accident. Just to be sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is the second, uh, the second game of the of the first round, Excellent. and our first round uh, was a draw. It's the one we analyzed last week, mm -hmm. and yeah. So in this one, I was playing as white, so it's a it's a good uh, chance to you know push for a win when you have black and when you have white in the in the second game. Yeah. Even and, the uh, computer says white is a little, little bit better right now in this position. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I already had the advantage. But uh, yes, yeah, so I picked to play e4. It's the most... Uh, uh, Good move. I usually, love it. Usually the most open, most attacking positions. And that's what basically what I was going for in this game. But my opponent played the Petrov. Yeah, that I, that I... Yes, I remember I watched the game. And I thought, like, wow, that is uh, something. So, have you played the Petrov a couple of times before? Uh, well, yes, is white. Um, I, I obviously I play e4, so it's uh, unavoidable to have the mm -hmm. Petrov a few times. But um, honestly, it doesn't happen to me that often. Um, for yeah. people who don't know, usually it's considered an opening that you play for a draw. Huh. It's like you didn't know that? No, I didn't. No, I thought that's... it was like super sharp. <laughs> no, no, it's it's like the most it's the most like uh, dull thing that you can get in <laughs> in uh, e4 e5 like because compared what? to compared to like the Italian and the the Rue Lopez, it's a lot it's a lot calmer positions. That's what people usually play for a draw is black. Wow. Whenever they play for a draw. That's why this was kind of surprising to me to see this to see my opponent play for a draw. She's because scared. No, but okay, I don't think she was playing for a draw, but it's just the opening choice was mm -hmm. strange because that's normally if she had won the first game, then this would make perfect sense. Sure. Because then she needs something calmer and she just um can can have a calmer position and make a quick draw. But um yeah, so that surprised me, the the opening choice hmm. of the Petrov. Um, there are, of course, many ways to react to it. Maybe some of them are a little more aggressive than others. Uh, I played the the main line that uh, that exists here, just taking on e5. Um, in our playoff, in our playoff, I actually didn't play this because she again played the Petrov in our rapid oh. game. In the playoff. Oh, okay. Yeah, I played uh, I played uh, knight c3 that time, if I oh. if I remember correctly. But so so yeah, I changed it for the playoff. But uh, in this game, I just went for some some line i knew i didn't prepare this didn't review this for years okay. so i just went for some line i knew there are a lot of ways to play here um a common one is to play d4 that's that's one of the main things to mm. do here you can also maybe play d3 push the knight and then play d4 i would play knight c3 for knight sure i love this double pawn and opening up the bishops if if yeah. the knight takes yeah, that's the line. That's the line I played as well. I huh. um, I like this line. And yeah, here the important thing is to take with the d pawn. Yeah. Of course, it's possible to take with the b pawn, but this way you open the bishop and you open the d file. So yeah, usually usually we're used to you know the saying that you should always take with the pawns um, towards the center. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of taking away from the center. I actually didn't know this saying. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, well, it, well, it's usually you know it's you always whenever something is on g three you take it with the h pawn and not with the f pawn. Oh uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense too. So, um, so yeah, this time it's 
it's a bit against uh, against the rule, but uh, it makes sense. You open up some files, and uh, honestly, there are many ways to play in in the Petrov. You're just always going to be around equal everywhere. <laughs> Maybe if you know the some of the theory, it's probably a slight a slight plus, but. Uh, it's, it's considered a very solid opening that is really hard to break. And uh, yeah, but at the same time, black isn't exactly, isn't exactly attacking you either. So it's just, it's just solid. It's just uh, positional, this which is really, really interesting that you're saying, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, I, I'm always happy to be white against the Petrov because I'm playing on full, full all in. And then I have a beautiful attack normally because I always have the feeling that black is having a hard time to defend funny i wish i had a beautiful attack every <laughs> time i played against the petrov I'm just doing it wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but i just always had the impression that it's that it's a very solid opening it that probably is i mean that yeah either i think that was my opponent's approach actually to this match probably she was just trying to play more positional yeah. positional chess and kind of outplay me um outplay me in that sense instead of mm -hmm. going for some crazy tactics which is what i personally wanted um but yeah, so it uh, didn't happen. So now I played, I developed with the bishop on f4. Mm -hmm. And I'll stop to maybe explain why the bishop is going on f4 and not on e3. So e3, bishop e3 is actually, um, might actually be the main line. And um, the point is that uh, the bishop is protecting c5. So maybe the knight might consider going on c5. Five twice. So now the bishop, now the knight develops on c6 for sure, and not on okay. d7. And as you could see in our game, because my bishop went on to f4, the knight developed on to d7. Okay. So this is um, basically how an example of a line can go. It's where Svetlana, excuse me, can I quickly? I just can I yeah. show my idea in, in this in this position exactly. Right. So what I would. I, so what I normally play, and just just it, it won't take more than a, one or two minutes, but I normally play a bishop to d3. Uh huh. Okay. So, yep. I, I think that's 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 a line as well. Yeah, and I believe black is castling now or not. Could be castling. Maybe yeah. the knight. Mm, okay, castles. Yeah, and then I play h4. Ah. And then I will get the knight to, to g5 and the queen to h5 and checkmate. No, okay. of course, it's a bit... Uh, but bishop g4 isn't working here, right? Is that the trap? Uh, well, I would... I would If it's g4, I don't know. I would take on h7, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I was wondering. Is there yeah. some bishop h7? I'm not and sure then... if it's a trap, but yeah, I will just take. It takes back and, and then I will... Yeah, back. exactly. Back like this. Uh, that and... is a trap. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean. Yeah. Okay. Nobody falls for this, of course. Uh huh. But so, what does black normally play here? I w I wouldn't know. That's the thing. So uh... you can check the online. Oh, that's it... a good. That's a great idea. Thank you. Okay. So your H four move doesn't seem to be the most popular, but which I'm happy with. Yeah. <laughs> Ninety seven. Okay. Strongest players played. Yeah, knight d7 here or rook e8. Yeah. Knight and then, I mean, I would play the bishop to... And this is where, where, yeah, things are falling apart, I guess, because that is probably a bad move. I would play the knight to g5. Uh-huh. Knight to g5. And I think... And this is where... And it's probably not a good move. Okay, but that's... I just wanted to quickly... Uh, I th This gives some... I don't know. I think I, 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 I like it. I, I would like to I, I would be happy to sacrifice my my knight there with the Definitely some attacking chances I see yeah. I see why you would like this line yeah uh, knight g5 yeah. h6 though and do is there any well probably I mean in in the blitz game I play queen to h5 and that will uh -huh. mess up everything because of course the knight goes to f6 and then I have to push my uh, queen back and then I would lose a piece knight yes. f6 is wrong but uh, I well yeah so yeah 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 I, okay I, I I don't know I oh, but this is yeah this is in a blitz game definitely it because yeah. it uh, it gets tactical and uh, you're the one attacking so yes so excuse me I just wanted to quickly like I I'm always having strong attacking positions with the pet I actually like this line maybe maybe I'll switch maybe I'll switch to it maybe st I mean you got to draw <laughs> against a f almost three hundred fifty <laughs> points stronger opponent so. It's. It, I guess it's fine what you're playing. 
<laughs> yes, it's fine. Well, um, your bishop bishop d three definitely definitely does exist, but h four I think is the, is your novelty. It, that's yeah, your that's your novelty. But I let's, I, let's I, get I, back to the game. Sorry for that. No, no, no. That that was interesting. So um, yeah, I played the setup with bishop f four. Basically, um, the bishop on f four is protect. Uh, protecting the e5 square so now the knight isn't going to go to e5 most likely so this is kind of um why black doesn't play knight to c6 here of course it's not a bad move but it's just that on d7 the knight has more options yeah. because had it been on c6 the next possible route is to go to e5 which isn't possible because my bishop is here had the bishop been on e3 maybe that's what black would have played mm -hmm. Um, but from d7, the knight can go to either c5 or maybe to f6. And uh, yeah, black kind of leaves the choice for now of where to put it. So now I think um, I deviated from the from the right setups and I played bishop to c4. It's not what is normally played, but like I said, I wasn't preparing for this. I was... I. I was just setting up my pieces, sure. just developing because this is not something I was expecting and it's not something that I get often. So I didn't really know any theory. I just knew the some basic ideas. And um, just to show what normally happens, I checked that the line here goes castling. Um, then the knight goes to c5. Bishop comes back to e3. So the bishop was on f4 before protecting e5. So now that it's not scary, the bishop comes back just in case. Maybe at some point the bishop would want to take. But uh, yeah, we leave that option for later. And um, we get something like this, a position where white, uh, white doesn't have pawns in the center, but he has all the pieces in the center. But uh, at the same time, no side has really any apparent weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So should probably be around equal, which is the whole point of this opening, I feel like, okay. is to be in an equal position. It's solid for both sides. And then just try to, yeah, just try to play chess. Just try to play some, yeah. some, positional, some positional game. So I played bishop to c4. Again, not normally where... Um, I think the bishop would like to go maybe because there's some a6 and b5 happening later. Maybe there's some d5 mm -hmm. and there might be a tempo on this bishop. But I thought that for now, the bishop here is standing quite okay because, well, there's no d5 for now because um, I castle. So I guess one of Black's ideas was to play c6, well, d5 and then c6 and just get a, a bit more space in mm -hmm. the center. Well, for now, my bishop is preventing that, but I do acknowledge that maybe at some point the bishop could uh, could be a weakness here if it gets under some some tempi. So uh, yeah, this was a moment that I wanted to maybe stop at and okay. ask you to I don't know maybe evaluate the position who, who which side would you rather play for and uh, since it's white to move uh, try to. Try to think about what you would play here and uh, what plans you would want to go for. So finally, I'm a little bit in my element because I'm the E4 player and I play against those openings uh, every now and then, as I mentioned before. So, um, yeah, and uh, unfortunately, my, my limited uh, brain capacity is... Uh, Chess-wise, it's going to. I have to checkmate the king, and that's what I'm probably <laughs> aiming to very quickly. So um, yeah, of course, I would play h3, and uh, then just g4 and attack with the pawns. And a bit premature, maybe, but uh, yeah, that's that's the that's the main line, of course. And of course, um, taking the the knight on f3 would be probably already a mistake if i i'm not leaning too far out of the window by this but the open line on g1 is something you definitely want to avoid mm -hmm. um yeah pushing the pawns forward with h3 g4 then pushing to g5 even mm -hmm. just yeah just throwing in my pieces and attacking the king on the dumbest and most stupid way that's my idea and that, that would be the right idea. That would be the right thing to do. Um, yeah. So h three is the best uh, is the best move. The thing is, I was actually worried about 
about bishop h3 if bishop h5 that's huh. that's really not that i was not concerned about that at all yeah. because yes then of course g4 yeah. and you can start you can start some sort of attack here i was not worried about that actually yeah now you can maybe play later some knight d4 knight f5 yes. or maybe h4 h5 looks, yes looks this nice. this would look nice right because i have already started an attack and black still has done nothing to my king mm -hmm. so that would be nice but what i was more concerned about was after taking if i don't get an attack like if i don't ever get some checkmate chances i was worried about this pawn structure quite a lot because in the end game something like this would be quite unpleasant um mm. because maybe maybe let's say black gets to exchange one of my bishops okay knight h5 for example what if black gets to exchange one of my bishops then i won't have my bishop pair advantage and then i will just be left with those I bad understand. pawns yeah. after my after a failed attack and that uh, yeah i was more i was already probably thinking too far into the end game that i how i wouldn't want to have those pawns and how i don't have enough pieces for an attack but actually here there's uh i want to analyze this there was this fun move bishop h3 bishop h6 and uh, the Whoa. point is that uh, it doesn't attack anything, to be honest. That's just a spot for a bishop to just just to just stay for now. Um, but yeah, the point is that if they take, then uh, you win back the piece like this. Nice. The knight on True. five, and of course this would be winning after the king has opened up. But of course, black doesn't have to take, and it's probably not too much better. Uh, but after h3, the thing is, yeah, you just have to basically know that this structure, even though the pawns do look weak, um, usually it's it's normal to get this as white. You have other advantages for it. You have the open g file, you have the bishop pair, and um, usually it is enough to be maybe equal, maybe slightly better. Um, and yes, yeah, so this was probably um, the best variation to go for and um, try to attack on the g-file and try not into the end game probably because you wouldn't want to have those pawns and uh, yeah so do that so i still wanted to play h3 but i was a little concerned about uh, about that position because i wasn't sure if my bishop pair was really worth it mm -hmm. ruining my pawn structure like that so um, I played queen d3 instead, which yeah. I think I think honestly your plan with h3 right away was was better. Um, mm. So I played queen d3. So now my threat is to play h3, and now I don't have to ruin my pawn structure, and I can just take back with the queen and have a good static advantage of my two bishops and open I file. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I did end up playing h3, but now uh, black doesn't really have to retreat the bishop uh, somewhere uh doesn't have to take the knight yes, and exactly. go to f5 and now g4 doesn't really come with the tempo anymore so so yeah now it's now it's a little different i um, i retreated my queen to f1 which now looking at it it looks really weird but during the game it made sense to yeah. me how you know you if I stay somewhere on d4 or on e3, then some rook, I don't know, some rook e8 is coming, even though probably not yeah, right not away. that's not so much fun, of course. Because of knight d4, maybe not right away, or some g4. But I thought that my queen on f1 is actually doing a good job because I'm going to play g4. I'm going to bring my queen, I don't know, like play g5. And if the g file opens, my queen is actually useful here. Mm -hmm protecting the bishop it's defending against b5 i thought every i thought my queen was great but now <laughs> looking at it it's not actually that great okay um yeah it's not actually that great queen to e3 was better and was a little more active so this was this was definitely something to consider oh, that's interesting um, yeah actually i noticed that um in games once you look at your games you don't notice how many moves you make backwards Mm -hmm. um like during the game once you look at the game after you probably <laughs> notice it a bit a bit more that wow i didn't make any moves forward yes. all of them are going backwards but um i think i think you notice it more once you look over your game than when you are playing the game you don't notice that uh, um I, i've noticed that with a lot of players how they don't even see that they're only moving backwards like a lot of my students 
because it's easier to notice it when you're looking not at your game or at someone else's game. So yeah, it's it's a habit that is better to get rid of the moving backwards. Okay, maybe here we can make a little stop again. Yeah. Where would you retrieve the bishop or would you even retreat it at all? Exactly. Well, of course, um, a class player like your opponent is has to have thought about that um, the knight to e5 is probably not this, that big of a threat as it looks as. If uh, I'm missing the words. It looks good to play the knight on e5, right? It looks very natural. It attacks the queen. It has a nice spot there. It's even defended by the bishop. And the queen has to retreat somewhere else. But then, while I was checking out uh, knight on e5, because I was watching the game live at this point. Uh -huh. Then I saw the, the, the threats, which are out of a sudden appearing for black, and they're terrible. And that would have <laughs> scared me to pieces. Because so the, what, what comes after knight e5? Uh, the, the queen goes to a4, right? Exactly. And now there's a mate threat. There's a Brutal. bishop. Well, bishop is attacked by the pawn. And then this bishop is attacked. So I actually think this might be lost. You might be losing a piece. It here. looks, yeah, it looks uh, really, really uh, terrible because, yeah, there's some some more threats. I mean, the idea of bishop to b3 is not working because you take the bishop on f4 exactly, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, yeah, so that was tough. But I think uh, because I was using the engine, naughty me, there was a way to escape. Thing. Maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe it was a different move, but you didn't fall for it at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but that that is a that is a threat, of course. So, um, yeah. What? But then I thought, like, gosh, what else to play? Because probably Bishop B three might be a sense. Yeah, retreating the Bishop is fine. Yeah, retreating the Bishop is fine. Bishop B three was possible. I didn't really want to do that because. If some a4, a, a5, yeah. a4 is coming later, I don't want my bishop to be there. So, well, um, I played this bishop to b5 move, which lo might look a little unnatural at mm -hmm. first. But my idea was to provoke c6 so that now I'm coming back to d3. If we compare it with the previous position, if I come back to d3 now, there, I there are going to be some... Uh, or if I come back, let's say, if I come back to e2 or something, then there's queen a4, right? Mm. Even now, there's queen a4, which I didn't really want to deal with. You see, the idea is that I can't take it because I lose two pieces at the end yeah. here. So now there's some queen a4 that's suddenly coming and attacking my bishop and my pawn. And I just didn't want to deal with that. So that's why I went to b5 first, kind of provoked the c6 move. So that now the queen's pathway is closed and then came back to d3. So that was that was the plan. So now black opens it back up again <laughs> with c5 because the queen, it does have a pretty good spot on a4. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so at this point, I had a few options. Um, I went to king b1. Uh, it was also possible to take on f5. Yeah. That would have been... That would have been a normal way to continue trade everything and um, mm -hmm. yeah probably probably just play that end game and it might be good to note that the bishop on b5 is not that effective anymore as it was earlier mm -hmm. uh, although it, it looks so good because the queen is uh, under fire but um yeah, the queen moves to e6 now, and although it looks so crowded, uh, all the options are there. Yeah, this would be a natural move. The bishop, I don't know, uh, the, the rook to e e1 probably to attack the queen. Is there an id4? Yeah, probably? exactly. That, yeah. that would be an option, or the queen could go to b6, and uh, out of a sudden it gets very crowded again. Uh, not yet, probably, because the bishop oh, is on e7 hop, oops, still. Hop, hop, sorry, my but... fault. Yeah, but it's fine. Actually, I didn't really want my bishop on b5 anymore because um, it has the potential of getting trapped at some point, right? Black plays also, c4, yeah. and then what do I do? Because next move, a6 traps my bishop. Yeah, nice. That's so, very nice, yeah. It doesn't get trapped immediately, but at some point, it can. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah the bishop um, to me was fine on d3 because it is going to get exchanged anyways. 
I just we were just waiting who will do it either it's going to be me or or the opponent so mm -hmm. uh, my opponent could have played this interesting move queen to a4 which I was a bit uh, I was a bit concerned about during the game because I didn't really want to make that bishop trade I didn't want to get left with a light squared bishop yep. not that the light squared bishop is bad but i'm just a little confused as to what it's uh, what it's really and doing now c4 <laughs> and then it has nothing left yeah yeah and then it's going back to some uh to some place on e2 and uh, black's dark sword yep. bishop could actually could actually become a better piece too and the pawns will rush on the king's side, uh, queen side too so yeah, yeah. But of course, all of these things probably are still roughly equal. This is why yeah. these positions are not... Um, uh, the thing with playing those calm positions is that the good thing about it is you can make probably... You have a lot of options, maybe like five or six moves that are still all going to be equal <laughs> or slightly better, slightly worse, and still be fine. It's not like in the Nidor where you make one move and, and you get checkmated you make one move wrong and you get checkmated it's not like that usually in those calmer mm -hmm. opening which yeah which could be good could be bad if you're if you're trying to play for a win and uh, confuse your opponent um but yeah i guess neither me or her were really risking i didn't really want to risk much so we were playing it calmly and yeah so this was queen a4 was an interesting move to consider I would have probably played bishop to e5 and then yeah some more trades are happening um a position like this would be would be interesting mm. because some pawns are hanging it would maybe some tactics would actually start to appear in this position it's not that dull it's still it's still not that dull but it's just i'm just saying my impression is usually people play the petrov to to play for a draw yeah yeah but it's maybe so not funny. everyone Maybe I don't. Maybe my opponent. I'm sure my opponent wasn't playing for a draw. So maybe, maybe she thinks. Maybe she thinks it's not. Uh, it's not a dull opening at all. So yeah. I mean, then of course she probably played it a couple of times. She knows about it. And uh, if you do not know, I'm. I'm always like in the very beginning when I was uh, playing e4 the very first times of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was scared of the Petrov. You were. there were so many options like you take it then the queen comes in between and there are some traps like some cute little let traps. me go grab my charger quickly oh sure get some energy it's like a red bull for the computer okay yeah we're good so <laughs> uh, so basically uh she played c4 and this might seem like a blunder at first glance because you might say that oh there's a there's a pin and the black just blundered a pawn but there are some tactics to consider here and uh, one of them is bishop c2 and the other one is queen a4 which is what happened in the game bishop c2 the point is that i have to take back the bishop and now black can play queen here and then later take either this bishop or this bishop whichever one Whichever one I allow to take, maybe yes. bishop g3, and then play this position. Um, and personally, I think I would like this as white because there's an isolated queen pawn, um, usually considered a weakness, um, and I can maybe try to attack it later. And um, but yeah, probably objectively, still still should be fine, still should be around equal. But my opponent picked the kind of the more complicated line with queen to a4. So now there's a threat of playing queen to c2 or bishop to c2. Um, and uh, yeah, and the queen is also doing a great job here on uh, attacking one, both bishops yeah. kind of at the same time. So uh, so I can't really uh, I can't really keep uh, keep both of them if I if I retreat one of them so that's why the only move for me is knight to d4 mm -hmm. so i kind of i block this file so if black that's retreats nice. the yeah. bishop then i can already keep my extra pawn and play bishop to b3 so this is why i'm sure she has calculated this in advance and i also did and we both went for this position intentionally mm -hmm. where now we exchanged some pieces we have the exact same material left, the exact same, you know, pawn structure is very similar. And, 
Yeah, I think it should be, again, around equal. What plan do you think you would pick here as white? Because I was having a bit of a bit of trouble kind of yeah. finding what to do. Gotcha. So the more I looked at this position at this point, the, the longer the computer or the engine was going through it, the engine said like black has a titsy tiny bit of an advantage. And I thought like that's weird because I feel quite okay with white. But uh, it seems to be that the pawn on c4 is doing a good job with uh, yeah well it's very hard to get rid of it and then there might be b5 at one point and the rooks are going in so black builds uh, up a stronger attack than white because white has no attack yet I think mm -hmm. so it's about white to find the correct moves to defend properly I guess I think mm -hmm. very natural uh, looking move is uh, the knight to d4 mm -hmm. which can go to f5 at one point and build up a couple of more threats getting the queen in then pushing the the bishop on h6 again or something like that also the rook maybe on a good day as just a Cyroman says pretty often on a good day the rook can shift over to the king side two to d4 and then go to g4 or something like that but only on a good day only on a good day on a bad day gosh help <laughs> me do not touch the rook yeah i i i don't know yeah so i would try to figure out how to attack black on the king side as quickly as possible because mm -hmm. or defend but i'm not a good defender so i would attack Okay, I see. Well, um, knight d4 is definitely definitely a move. I looked at it during the game too. I, by the way, I played queen to e2, I believe. Mm. Yeah, that's what I played. Um, because I realized my queen on f1 is actually not doing much and uh, it has to get into the game somehow. The knight on c2, I wanted to keep it there for now because in case some b5 yeah. is coming, then the knight is at least protecting b4, so it's going to be harder to play it for now. So... Knight on c2, maybe a bit passive for now, but it has some options in the future, either depending on b4 or maybe it can go here, whatever. Yeah, actually, yeah, knight e3 is now that I'm thinking of it again. Knight e3 does a good job, actually, attacking the pawn on c4. And yeah. then if the pawn is defended, however, then it goes to f5. So maybe that's a little bit of a more initiative. I'm not sure. Yeah, knight. Um, that's why the the knight has a lot of options, yeah. but see, but the queen doesn't really. Yes, so it true. has to. So that's how you can sometimes think about when you see an improvement plan for a lot of your pieces. Try to think about which piece has no other options, yes. and that's probably the one you should start with because, um, because if your other piece has some other potential, uh, you can maybe take a bit longer and see what your opponent does and then decide where it should go. Yeah, I learned this from you. It's a good, good advice. Think of yeah. the your your weakest piece at the moment or the one which has the list. Yeah, so knight e2, eh, queen e2 is a good move. Sure. Right. I don't think I can start an attack on the king side really because that, my pawns are a little slow. That's just so... me again thinking in one direction only. No, it's, uh, yeah, I, I just was bringing the pieces into the center yeah. and actually sometimes uh, the attack uh, the attack will start by itself if you have all of your pieces on their best squares you know mm. you'll find you can find a way later it doesn't have to be a pawn storm yeah if your pieces are all doing a great job if um if the knight is on d4 let's say then you can maybe start having attacking chances with f5 you yeah. know so the first <clears throat> thing is to just bring all of the pieces in so that's why that's what we both did. This part of the game I don't think is too too interesting. Okay. Here my opponent decided to trade queens, which um, I probably would not have done because I thought that maybe Block had a bit more attacking chances than I did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Of course, they they're not some huge attacking chances. It's fairly easy for me to defend because look, Black has basically one or let's say two pieces attacking. Maybe the bishop can help. And I have all of my pieces core just ready to come into defense. And it's uh, the attack defense ratio is probably not going to be in Black's favor, and there's not going to be yes. uh, some some crazy checkmates. So we make some trades. Um, we again, it's uh, this is why uh, this this opening is not usually is not usually too crazy. 
is that some trades happen, same pawn structure. We go into the end yes. game. But the funny part is I managed to mess up from here. <laughs> managed to mess up this seemingly very, very equal Oops. equal position. So yeah, but we will get to it. The end game um the end game in this game was quite interesting you've mm -hmm. seen it already yes yes and uh, even dr Carsten muller took a quick look uh, at it and mentioned that uh, it was a very very creative uh, and interesting idea of yours to uh, how to advance in this difficult position for white put it into um end game magic uh no not yet no 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 i was just sending the the game mm -hmm. to him and said like look that was interesting in my opinion uh -huh. he said indeed yeah. yeah yeah so uh we are getting to we're getting to the night end game and um yeah so this is uh kind of where the end game essentially starts after all the trades um so now As you mentioned, this pawn on c4 is quite annoying because it is not letting my king, uh, my king really advance yeah. into the center, which is where he wants to be. And uh, I was basically trying to get rid of this pawn by maybe playing some b3 after. So I played a4 mm -hmm. to prevent b4, b because if I had yes. played this right away, there's probably some b5 and yeah. the pawn stays there so i started with a4 which some people after the game told me that it was weird to play this <laughs> that it was quite a weird move um but it made sense to me at the time um uh, it might have been better in the situation like this um yeah just by looking at the pieces see which ones you want to trade which ones you don't want to trade and it was good to trade the bishops mm -hmm. i was considering this as well i was not sure about this night end game i mean i was sure that it's objectively probably probably just equal nothing special um and uh, that i just thought it would be a little harder for me to defend it uh the thing that i didn't calculate far enough is that b5 is actually wrong in this position because black doesn't have enough time to bring his king to to like a nice square for example uh -huh. if now the black king is on c5 i'm sure black is better and black is pushing for a win Uh, but uh, if not, then my king is actually coming here faster on to oh. b4 or to a4. And at this point, I'm pretty sure it is white who will be pushing for a win oh, wow. already. So b5 is wrong, so black would just have to take and take. And uh, again, probably just an equal endgame. By the way, do you know how to evaluate a night endgame? No idea. I got this one piece of advice, which I think is really useful. I didn't know it for a while, but basically how to evaluate it is if a pawn end game, if you remove the knights, if the pawn end game is winning, then the knight end game is most likely winning as well. Huh. So pawn and knight end games actually go hand in hand because um, it is very often possible, you know, to sacrifice maybe a knight for two pawns, maybe for one pawn and then have a passer or it's possible to yeah offer some night trades so night and pawn end games are actually a lot more similar than you than you might think it's not like in it's not like rook end games right when you can be one or two pawns down and still have some yeah. some yeah. initiative and due to your peace activity here it's quite materialistic sometimes and uh if basically pawn structure matters a lot as well so just try to think about it If this if if the pawn end game here is winning, then the knight end game is probably winning as well. Okay. So so here I would consider it a draw. Yeah, that's what that's what I would uh, that's what I would think as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of it makes it very easy to evaluate it, right? Once you think about the pawn end game, it becomes a lot easier. Sure, of course. So yeah, absolutely. and that's why past pawns are super uh, big assets in knight end games because knights are quite slow; they're not as fast as bishops. And uh, yeah. pass pawn, like, outside pass pawns are also a huge thing in pawn end games. And usually they give very good winning chances. So that's how you kind of evaluate a night end game. I thought it was, it's, it, it's really helpful um, after I found out True. this piece of advice. And it lets you evaluate a night end game quickly. Um, of course, All, there's always exceptions, but sure. it's, I find that, I find that it works, it works a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we are almost at the end game. And um, again, the black king somehow got into the center a little faster than 
uh, than mine did because mine is blocked. My king is blocked by the c pawn. Uh, I was planning to play b3 after and to maybe get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, for now, it's still not still not bad, but it's slowly getting a little harder and harder to defend because Black is improving his pieces and my pieces are still trying to find ways to to get out into the center. Yep. Again, thinking about which trades you want to make and which ones you don't, I feel like it was good for Black to make this bishop trade. First of all, it's forced. I can't avoid this bishop trade, True. or else my knight is on is hanging on g3. And uh, if we compare this position now, it's not clear what my knight is doing on g3 here. As opposed to, we looked at this exact same position with, uh, well, almost the same position with the knight being on e3, which is a lot more useful here in stacking c4 and preventing the king from moving forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. That would have been a slightly better, um, but here probably a little tougher for white to defend this kind of end game. Do you think you would be able to hold uh, that end game as white? Never. What really? <laughs> <laughs> You're not down material. I know. So it's not. It's still not that bad. On a on a good day. <laughs> on a good day, yeah, we can agree to that. So we did make it some. We did make that trade after the position changed a little bit. And um, let's arrive to a critical moment, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So knight went to d4. Again, remember, this is actually move 39, which is the move where it's uh, a lot of people make a mistake, right? Because it's right before the 40th <laughs> move. It's usually, it's, it's usually so annoying to make a mistake on the 39th move. Um, and then later you get half an and then later your opponent gets half an hour more to think about the position, which you didn't have while well, you still had yeah, 30 seconds on move 39. But so imagine you're playing here as black. I'll make it I'll make it a little easier for you. Um, yes. so as black, um, how would you evaluate this position? Do you think it's still do you think it's still slightly better? Do you think it's winning? Do you think it's pretty easy to hold and what you would play what kinds of yeah. moves would you consider so that's a good question and i wouldn't have a clear answer for this because i was looking at the game and i was just uh, confused at this point i wouldn't really know i mean i guess okay so let's be clear here the black pawns are a bit advanced on the king side mm -hmm. and i think i heard or learned it at one point that if the king is also helping those pawns then it is a bit of an advantage for black or it can be mm -hmm. so if there's also this famous example if h5 is played then you can probably advance one of the pawns by sacrificing two other pawns right you know the famous the famous it's usually pushed one uh, row right one row down yeah. And then you play you play G three and yeah. Whichever exactly. one they take with you push the opposite one and then you promote one. Right. So this so that's, is yeah. That's this a good is... that's a good idea for pawn endings, right? And with the knight, uh, the knight might be able to help. Yeah. And, there we and have the exception. Work. But but you're right. You do use a lot of ideas from pawn end games in knight end game as, as well, which mm -hmm. is what I was talking about earlier. So yeah, so you would try to advance on the king side. I believe so, yes. Because mm -hmm. I don't think that there's too much happening on the queen side at and the moment. Do you think it's still holdable or for much white, better? Much better for black, I mean. Of I, course, it's black who's playing for a win yeah, I don't. Here. I wouldn't say much better, no. I think it might still be holdable. Yeah, well, that's what I thought too. But turns out it would have been super difficult to defend after f4. So actually not h5 first, which is what my opponent played, uh, which makes... Oh makes sense of course but f4 was quite a bit of um calculation to do so f4 it's um even positionally it has to be a good move because i'm usually not able to take uh yeah. i don't want to allow the king here right but maybe it was quite a bit for her to calculate you know that she had to calculate 96 and then she had to come back but of course this structural modification is better for black than it is for me to allow this king onto f4 so i would have had to play g4 and later black can play this a5 move which i think we both 
missed um and uh, basically block the pawns in the way that black needs needs them to be blocked and thing is my knight doesn't really have an entry point so can't really enter and go go forward and attack some of black's pawns so i would just have to stand there and wait while black can put the pawn structure in the way that they need that they need it to be and now unfortunately black does have an entry point through c4 and okay. of course once the knight gets in it's just it's just bad um yeah so the knight can get into e3 to e5 i think is better so yeah then the king moves forward too and it's tough yeah so this this becomes really difficult and i personally probably think it should even be lost if we put it on the computer Phew. so yeah, it, it definitely more difficult uh, to defend for white. And it's interesting that you also mentioned a5, which would be a strong move because I just had a lesson uh, earlier with uh, Elisabeth Pitz. We're doing kind of mm -hmm. the German version what from what you are doing. And she mentioned that um, in order to stop the pawns, which are three pawns on the side, uh, often uh, there are moves like um, g4 or, or h4 and on the opposite side, you mm -hmm. block a lot by yeah pushing forward a5 so that's mm -hmm. that's uh, funny that it uh, appears again this this yeah. Uh, idea yeah yeah i'm glad my lessons are similar to elizabeth <laughs> at least, in at least some way that's flattering yeah. to me <laughs> they're different so. and that is a good thing too on so many levels because it's i'm learning from both of you a massively uh, great way so if you're if you guys at home can speak German and English, well, you know what to do, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, this end game is soon nearing nearing the end. And this is uh, the idea that we were talking about previously that yeah. uh, that Arne really liked while we were watch while he was watching the game live. Um, so basically, I advanced my pawn to A5 mm -hmm. because I had this idea in mind, which we'll see which we'll see later, um, to kind of, because I was already feeling that this is a tough position to defend. Um, I'm probably going to have to find ways to play for a draw to maybe sacrifice my knight at some point. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, of course, knew that black was trying to push for g4, which is a very typical way to push to push pawns, mm. which is in the pawn endgame, for example, usually in the pawn endgame, just to show, um, sometimes there's this idea that you push, you push the pawn forward, and then let's say they take like this, and then the idea is to play h4, and then push f4. So of course, this is not the exact position because there's still knights on the board, the yep, kings yep. are still here. But if we're talking about the pawns by themselves, now this pawn is advancing, and there's no way to stop it, and it usually comes faster. And if they take with another pawn, then you can play f4 and then later promote on this side. So yep, that's yep. the very common idea in a in a pawn ending. Usually when the pawns are uh, f2, g2, and h2, and then f4, g4, and h4. But that's, yeah, so that's, that's definitely an idea. But here, black doesn't have to sacrifice anything. So instead, they decided to create an, an outside pass pawn, kind of. Yeah. Here, um, so in case I play something like f4, then of course black has the upper hand because uh, first of all, I give up the e4 square, which I never wanted to do. Um, and now they will always have some h4 ideas with this pawn promoting and running forward. And this was the position where I was fearing uh, for, for your life here because yeah. I couldn't find a solution for white here. I was fearing for my life too, to be honest. It's it got it got a little scary here. Mm. Um, so I made some pawn exchanges, and this is I think the moment where I played a six, <laughs> which was a move that you liked. It's cute. Um, yeah. yeah. So the idea is to basically double black pawns because I'm going to lose this pawn anyway, right? Yes. I can't be holding on to it because I'll I'll just lose on the king side. Um, so this is a good way to give up your pawn because now. Um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, also there are some uh, there are some fortresses that exist here. For example, I think yes. even with an extra knight, if the pawn, not two pawns, I'm not sure about two pawns, but about one pawn, if the pawn is somewhere like on A2 or on 
A3. One of them is winning, but another one is a draw. So I think if the pawn gets too far, then it might become a draw at some mm -hmm. point. Um, so usually it's, I mean, it's always great to double your opponent's pawns on the, on the last, uh, on the A or at the H file. Yeah. And, you know, if there was, if this was a bishop, if this was a light scored bishop, that would just be happiness and joy because my king goes to A1 and there's never, and black is never winning this uh, with a bishop that's the opposite color of the, uh, of, of the, the promotion square, square. Yeah. that's that's just always a draw no matter how many pawns there are on the a file I, I even had exactly this with two pawns on the a file and i knew about this uh not but i calculated it yeah for a long time and then i could uh, get a draw so yes. yeah it happens yeah that's yeah that's nice and there's it's a fairly easy draw like there's nothing yes. that the opponent yes. can do he just stands in the um in the corner and and that's it so with a knight it's more complicated of course but it's um it's a good way to give up a pawn basically so that i don't have to deal with the pawns yes. uh, being being connected and instead they're just doubled on the a file so uh some more pawn exchanges and now basically my idea was to start being annoying to this pawn <laughs> that i can tie one of black's pieces to defending this pawn probably the knight and uh then my king will come into this direction and uh, yep. collect collect the pawns or just at least stand in their way and then there's nothing that black can really promote so i made a mistake here and played knight to e7 which didn't seem like a mistake yes, um, yes. at that point and maybe i'll give you this as a final little exercise where would you move the black king basically yeah, the... one move wins and everything else draws yeah so at home of course um if you see the game of Svetlana because in this case since it's an analysis you have the full game of course um set up below but um yeah thinking about this if you were following so far um I believe uh, now the king goes to um oh wait am I wrong here yeah, now that you mention it, okay, I have to think a bit more. Of course, well, you I... know how the game ended, so you yeah. know what happened in my game after. But I cannot go to uh, e6, uh, of course. Be uh, e5, and I mean. Not. <laughs> so e5? is it d? No, is it e6? It is king e6. Uh -huh. So king is the only winning move, which I guess we both uh, didn't calculate far enough. King e6 wins because actually the knight doesn't have that many squares. Uh, uh, so yes, that was the problem, yeah. The point is going to c8 is like way too far. You're gonna lose on the king's on the king's side somewhere. Going to c6, um, yeah, so let's say you go to c8. The king, the knight is gonna collect g3 before before it's possible, and then there's two pawns running, and that's mm, um, that should be lost. Um, and uh, so c8 doesn't work, right? c6 um, just gets under this check and uh, the knight Evil. gets pain. Yeah, that's not very nice to see. And knight g8, which is probably the most, the one that makes the most sense, actually gets the knight trapped, which I didn't see, um, e like this. And the knight is kind of... Um, like it's trapped with within these two squares onto g8 and h6 gotcha, and gotcha. i'm fairly certain that there is a way to trap it somehow or at the very least at the very least the king is just gonna come yes right he's gonna come somewhere to f5 later yeah not right away because there's still a check but um but right so the knight is just stuck and it will get trapped uh, it will get trapped there Mm -hmm. And uh, that is just not unpleasant. Um, yeah, actually, maybe the knight just actually goes and collects the pawn. I think it, yeah, c6. Oh, and then no, no, it no, not trapped. collect yeah. the pawn. You just trap it. You yeah, just yeah. trap it on king g8, king g7. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was, it was... Well, uh, to calculate this, both of you also didn't have an amazing amount of time. As far as I remember, we, I think... We were already, it's only move 47, but yes, we already were spending our yeah. time 
our extra 30 minutes quickly. Yeah, so calculating so, this is tough. So yeah, I didn't even see it was a mistake either, but yeah. Right, so the logical thing is, right, to just go king to c5, um, try to support your a5 pawn, but after this, um, unfortunately for black, and fortunately for me, this is a draw, uh, because I have the time to uh, come with my king and defend uh, the pawn, the a4 pawn from promoting, and uh, so the idea here is that I can sometimes give up my knight on mm -hmm. g4 if I ever want to, if I can collect both of these pawns. Right. right. So if I if I take if I can take both of these a pawns, I can just safely take on g4, and black is never going to have a winning chances with just the knight yep. left on the board. So that's why black tries um, to protect the pawns on the pawn on a4. But now my knight actually has some ability to start giving checks, and uh, that's exactly what I what I was doing here. Um, and uh, yeah, there, af after this, I don't think there is ever there is ever a chance to win because black is always forced to come back to defend here. King is defending this pawn, and the knight is always defending this pawn. So basically, black can't really make any progress, and my knight just alternates by yeah. attacking both of them. So. Um, that's what happened. Eventually, we traded one pair of pawns, which was not scary for me, uh, for me at all, because um, you know by then already. Because by yeah, by this point, you already know that there's only one uh, one pawn here, which isn't going to yes. isn't going to promote. My knight will sacrifice itself at some point, and actually, I don't even think it matters which pawn it is. If it's almost any pawn, unless it's running really, really quickly and the king is close. Um, I don't think it matters which pawn it is. Knight can always sacrifice itself for it. And that is how it ended, is I just sacrificed my knight for the pawn. And this one was a draw, so Bravo. we went to the playoffs after after this, uh, after the two draws in the classical yeah. portion. And you, you kept your uh, head up high there too. So uh, yeah, a very, very cool game. I enjoyed watching this. It was intense. It was, I think it was also the last game played from all the, the women there, I think mm -hmm. I remember. Well, sure it was not long, but uh, it, was, it was one of the- One of the last one ones, yeah. Longer ones, yeah. Let's say it like this. So let me ask you one quick question um, about this because, so, uh, Besides this little mistake of the knight uh, giving the check, which is very hard to calculate in this time. So I don't even think that uh, either of you, well, maybe somebody would have found out, but it's difficult to find out. Now, at one point where you were in a bit of a struggle situation and you were pushing the pawn to a6 and then you converted this to a draw because you were calculating was how did you feel this? Is this like a victory feeling because you 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 managed to get out of there or was it more like okay that was lucky i have to do better tomorrow or how did you feel about something like that yeah a bit a bit of a bit of both actually sometimes it actually feels very good to save uh, a lost position okay like, sometimes it even feels better to save a lost position than it is to you know to to <laughs> win um so it was um it was it was a good feeling that I was I was worse and I managed to uh, to make it a draw and that uh, and that I didn't uh, lose that very difficult end game, but yeah at the same time I realized that it's going to be tough in the playoffs because so far um, in this game for example she was the one who was pushing and I was more or less more or less defending, yeah. so uh, yeah it's 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 a bit of both but I think more I think it's more of a from a positive point of view. Uh, I, I always think more from a pos positive point of view, and uh, yeah, it was nice to save that end game. And I think it's just more unpleasant for her to know that she was she was pushing and she had chances and, uh, sure, and yeah. to convert them. And now in the playoff, you know, anything anything can happen. It gets it gets crazier the less time the less time there is. So, and in the playoffs, how did you feel about uh, now that it's going to be rapid? Did you feel more confident or what, did you feel more like, oh, I didn't want this to to happen? Um, the playoffs are always stressful, of course. Yeah. But for me, being the underdog, uh, like, I, I was I was a lot lower rated than my opponent. Being in the playoffs was already was already an achievement to sure. uh, to not uh, 
only play two games and lose both. So um, I took, I just considered it as a good chance to just keep playing and uh, and yeah, just just try to just try to play some good chess. But of course, rapid uh, uh, rapid is a lot more stressful, and it is um, it it is a bit more random, a bit more luck, a bit more mm. uh, yeah, basically a lot a bit more mistakes are going to happen. So it it is a little more randomized, which I think is probably good for me um, because I was the I was the underdog and uh, the crazier things get, I guess, the better. But still, of course, she's a very strong rapid player as well. So, yeah, I think she has a rapid rating like 23 or 2400 too. Um, so it's uh, it's still it's still not that easy. Um, but I, I enjoyed playing the playoffs. It was definitely, it was a different experience. Like this tournament by itself was a very different experience from all the other tournaments because of its, because of its system, sure. because you, you can't afford to, you can't afford to lose. You can't afford to make, uh, to make a mistake because once you lose your tournament just ends. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all very proud of you. Yeah. And I hope you had fun as much as we did and, uh, see you guys next week. Bye-bye.